primary school from day one me and Amy were drawn to each other and we both loved singing we had a group called Sweet and Sour because we were mimicking Salt and Pepper who are our favourite rap duo I was a rapper when I was a little kid rapper and me and my friend had a little um, little act called Sweet and Sour because we loved Salt and Pepper so much we wanted to be Salt and Pepper so much we called ourselves Sweet and Sour Alan Glass, who was friends with my mum, knew about Sweet and Sour and then he was like, if you want to come in and record, you're, you're more than welcome to. And obviously we were just like beside ourselves. And that, that was our first experience in the studio. It was an amazing experience and um, we felt like we were, you know, the young white salt and pepper. <laughs> I wasn't ready, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. When you go on, do you want me just to start the intro and you speak over what you want to speak in the I was reading the NME about Massive Attack making a new record. And it said they were looking for a new vocalist. The next day I took Amy to meet Mark Picken, who manages them. We all hit it off and very quickly <laughs> offered to send her down to Bristol to work with them. There was two or three trips like that. I remember going to pick her up and she'd had such fun, really enjoyed it. Got in the car, I was like, have you got any music? And she was like, yeah, but I hate it. And I was like, what do you mean you hate it? You're working with Massive Attack. You're great, they're great. She was like, it's whale music. It's great, they're brilliant, and I'm having a great time, it's not for me. I kind of knew it wasn't the right direction, but it just felt like an exciting, well, she featured on a massive attack record and then all of a sudden the world will know who she is. But it wasn't meant to be. But when someone like Massive Attack are interested in an artist, word gets around. I met her and she was very unconventional, certainly not what you would have expected from the voice. Clearly she had a love of hip hop and, and urban music, which was very much my background. Guy started making stuff happen. He you know, he called Salam Remy. Salam he worked with the Fugees, Lauren Hill. Before the publishing deal was even done, we were in Miami. First time I met her, I knew she was a natural. But it was more than being able to sing. She had phrasing. She knew how to sing a song in three or four different ways. Like she can style it off just as if it's like a jazz musician. So it was kind of like, okay, so how good are you gonna get? Let's see how good you can get. He's a really inspirational person, Salam. I'll think of 20 ideas for a song, but I'll think they're all stupid. And he'll be like, no, of course it's not stupid. Of course you could write that. Like, I heard Love is Blind, I wrote because he said one thing to me. He said to me, her eyes were like yours. And I was just like, her eyes were like your, her, his eyes were like, his eyes were like yours. And I wrote the whole song in about 10 minutes. I couldn't resist him. His eyes were like yours. His hair was exactly the shade of brown. He's just not as tall, but I couldn't tell. It was dark and I was lying down. We did I Heard Love Is Blind and Cherry that week. 
I did the songs mainly with the guitar. Recording the vocal first, then I would build out the arrangement. And that's just the way she became accustomed to working with writing the song and then building it out. We were out there at the same time, just me, Nikki and Amy. We were basically going to the studio, going to diners, having a drink at night, smoking weed, jamming in the hotel room. It was brilliant. By the end of it, Salam was like, I'm doing this. She's really special. We don't know where or exactly how this is going to happen, but it will happen. The other producer I really wanted to get her in with was Commissioner Gordon, who did the miseducation of Lauren Hill sent him some music and again straight away he was like get her out here now literally the first day that she came in my studio she was in my live room i was in the control room getting the board together and i'm hearing this sound and it sounds like the old black woman's <laughs> like literally like a blues singer and then i realized it's her in the room the microphone was on I said, what you just did? What were you just doing? She said, I was just humming. I said, could you do that again? And she started doing it. And I was literally, I was just taken aback. I couldn't believe that voice was coming out of her. He used these amazing musicians from Jamaica that were all Bob Marley's old musicians. He'd have to have a huge bag of weed for them when they got in. And there'd be like a cloud of smoke in the studio. And he'd be so stoned just by sitting in the room. And just the, the banter and the conversation, Amy just be in the middle and she'd be smoking a spliff with them. And it's before the music's been cut or manipulated. It's just live music in a room, snowing outside. And I just sit in the corner watching it all, just thinking, this is unbelievable. Hello. I'm just here, smoking a fag. I just like to, oh, I look so grim. I look like a floating head, you know, I've got no hair. I'm just on a black screen. <laughs> There's my hand. What's going on? Hey, Where's the off, where's the off button? There it is. Hello. Hi, I'm sorry it was so long. I had to go and talk to my friend. It's Hi. okay. You were amazing. Oh, I'm glad you were amazing. I'm glad you were right at the pillar, right? Yeah, I was the one who was screaming. Yeah. Yeah. What's your name, sis? Marta. Without, Without age. age. <laughs> yes. oh, your nails are pretty. Oh, yeah, 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 look, look, especially for the notices. I got a right back. Can I have a kiss? I just, I just need yes, darling. I'll be doing three. Yeah. I forget every okay. time I forget. You're all on. Take that book for out of the dressing room. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you, girls. We done. We done. We done. We out. We out. We out. Right. How long is the How long is the turn? Go to the on the way out. <laughs> Yeah, I am really like, 
I remember it. Right. It is quite exciting. It is really exciting. I don't want to miss Beyonce. Well, you better get going, but let me just say um, congratulations. How are you feeling about your nomination tonight? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really, you know, um, I'm just excited to be here. Yeah. When you're first put in the public eye, you become Ooh. very aware of yourself. The press have a very clever way of saying things, don't they? They applauded her for being curvy. That's definitely when weight became an issue for her. That's when the dieting and all that kind of thing started. She never realised how pretty she was. Never. The winner of Best British Female is, of course, Dido. Hi, V. Hi. Be careful. Thank you. How are you? Gracias. I can't. Yeah, that's what you're up to today. Wait, that's actually Spanish, isn't it? <laughs> Wait, feel me to make it look like I'm waiting. <laughs> Amy, that's uh, gross. Not there. Uh, Don't be so horrible. Don't be so grim. Finally, they have named a shop after you. Look at it. <laughs> mm. Some of the loveliest. Yeah, shop of me doing Melanian. Chianti. Come on. <laughs> yeah, now drink it. <laughs> Come on, imagine it's toffee vodka. Oh, have a nice day today. <laughs> I only drink toffee yeah, vodka by the bottle. Oh, Not from a glass. How does it feel drinking that in Milan? Good. Into our AC. Hey, Steve. Pizza or pasta? Pasta. Red or white? Red. Thanks. <laughs> okay, darling. So, Anastasia, yeah. tell me, how does it feel to be in New York? Well, ever since I won the competition to leave my home country, it's beyond joy. Yeah. Beyond joy? Yeah, I can't I express the way I feel. Square. They said he's I've like never been on an escalator before. They, they, I'm just gonna go get a, uh, a map to find out a good place to no, eat. No, 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 no. No, no, because I. We'll just they're find really somewhere. Good. They're really Come good. on. They've got a really good map in there. Yeah, oh, all right. Yeah. Next shot will be us lost in New York. Why are you filming me that close? I'm ugly. Yeah. Beautiful set in New York, in there. It's fantastic. Ugly, man. Wow. wow. The Rock's been there. They wrestled in there? Yeah, the wrestling restaurant. They get all the superstars in there, and then the superstars get drunk, and they buy people drinks, and they get people all rowdy, they get the crowds in. Has China been there? China's been there. How do you feel about that? You'll never give mama right like she's the
came out in America, but it became an import. We started to find that there was this word of mouth on Amy Winehouse Frank, and you couldn't just go into a shop and buy it. We found that there was this community of people that had really tried to source an Amy record, and therefore they felt exotic, they felt special. Is that truthful, you know, and it's that deep, you know, I'm like, like that, you know, you are like sisters, your best friends, but you could be sisters. When her man, whoever the fuck he is, <laughs> when her man comes to my house like, yeah, you got something I can roll with. No, I fucking don't. I don't have anything you can roll with. This is what this is about, it's called addicted. Um, it's about, it's about my girl's boyfriend coming around thinking he can smoke my weed when, it, when he really, 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 really can't. <laughs> Guy Moot, who signed me to EMI Publishing, said, uh, Amy Winehouse is in town for one day. Do you know her? Do you have any desire to meet with her? And I said, yeah, sure, just send her over to my studio. I didn't really know anything about her until she showed up. I just asked her what kind of record that she wanted to make. And she played me things like the Shangri-Las that I wasn't really that familiar with. And then she'd play me other songs. I'd go like, oh, that's good. She'd be like, oh, that's the Salaam song. But she was instantly just so cool. I liked her in the first five minutes. When I met him, I played him all the 60s stuff that I'd been listening to, and he was just like, wow. Oh, my God. Like, you could tell he was really inspired by it. I wasn't established yet, so I wanted to impress her. I said, let me have a night to work on something. I'll come back tomorrow. So she came back the next day, I played her the track, and I looked back and I was like, so what do you think? And she's like, I just gotta go make a phone call. My manager called me at that time, he goes, how'd it go with the Winehouse girl? And I was like, I don't know, I just played her this track, but I don't know if she's crazy about it. And then he's like, oh, hold on, I got another call. And it was like someone from the label saying, Amy just says she's over the moon over the Sing Mark place, so she's gonna stay another five days. Rocky's such a cool guy. We work together so closely. He's the music geek, yeah, so I'd go in the studio and I'd say, I want something that sounds like this and this and this. He'd be like, cool, come back at two o'clock tomorrow, I'll see you then. And he'd have come up with some really cool beat. That first day she wrote Back to Black, all the lyrics and the melody in two or three hours. She would tell me stories about Blake and this tempestuous, crazy, extreme relationship. He left no time to regret, kept his dick away with his same old safe bag. Me. And my head high, and my tears dry, get on without my guy.
black, black. Oh, it's a bit upsetting at the end, isn't it? Boom, boom, boom. I mean, we've got another day, haven't we? So let's, you know. Yes. Yeah. It was just one of those serendipitous things, like I just caught her at that magic moment, you know? She was just ready to get it going, that's why I couldn't understand what everyone else was saying about this troubled, procrastinating artist. I was walking down the street with Mark Ronson and purely as a joke, I sang the hook. She was like, they tried to make me go to rehab and I was like, no, no, no. And she did like to put up the hand. He was like, who is that? That's funny. And I was like, well, it's, I just made it up. It's, it's nothing, it's stupid. He's like, oh, that'd be such a cool idea for a song. And I was like, well, let's go and do it then, because it's true. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's quite a novelty idea. It's a novelty song. I'm used to writing songs that take me a year to write. So, because it's such a silly little song, I was like, we could do it in five minutes, come on. Try to make me go to rehab, I say no, no, no. Yes, I've been black, but when I come back, you know, no, no. I ain't got the time, and if my daddy thinks I'm fine, just try to make me go to rehab, I say no. I haven't brushed it so long. Richie, you bastard, what are you doing? I can't get through. Why, have you, haven't you got a pass? What have you got? All right, stay there, stay there a second, I'm coming. Tracy, can I go for a little, I will be two minutes. Two seconds. I'm, no, I'm good around this club. It's my timer. You're going to have to put that Do you have, um, fuck my dry card? Yep. Can I get any laminates at all? Oh, Do you have any more ones? Oh. Amy, can you just go and get your hair done, please? Oh, yeah, okay. Five minutes, then, girls. Oh, hi. Oh, I'm a bit aroused. I can't lie. <laughs> 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 yeah. I think it's Sometimes I go out by myself and I look across the water and I think of all the things watching the world and in my head I paint a picture Cause since I come home well my body Amy came back to New York and I was working on my album version at the time, which was all covers. The theme was all guitar bands. I said, are there any songs that you know that would fit that thing? So she's like, well, I like this song Valerie that they played down at my local. It was quite like a mid-tempo rock thing and I was kind of like, if you say so. Well, sometimes I go out
We didn't actually meet her and track with her until we did Valerie. We didn't know what to expect. All of a sudden, she shows up, and she's just like this little thing that loves to curse and shoot pool. And that's cool. We like to curse and shoot pool, too. Valerie. She had a really nice, quick wit. When you meet someone that's talented and like-minded, you know, you hope that you can have a working relationship or a friendship that can carry on, and, you know, you create great things from it. Your dinner, catch a tan. I hope you find the right man who fix it for you. We did two versions. We did the slow version. We spent, like, all morning working on the slow version. And then as a somewhat of an afterthought, you know, Mark was like, okay, let's do another version with this other beat. And we did that in probably two takes. I remember the very first time I heard Amy, it was from the Frank album, and at the time I chalked it up to, you know, here's another very cool, sophisticated British artist who has no shot of crossing the pond. And all of a sudden, she had released Back to Black. And now, there was some level of phenomenon status in the UK, I and mean, something big was happening over there. And this time, I didn't hesitate even for a second. of buzz about her. It was jammed to the rafters. Most F was there, Mark Ronson was there, Jay-Z was at the second show. And everybody seemed to be very aware of who she was. She was nervous as hell. She was happy. She wasn't puffed up about herself at all. She didn't feel entitled. She was almost embarrassed by the fact that she was doing something. It was an amazing show. It was one of those shows where you walk out and you're like, holy fuck. But you could sort of see it then that she was an artist. She was not cut out to be a star. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, guys. Happy Friday. Don't have anything to start you out with, so. Um. Tom, it being Friday, I've got a couple of consular issues to ask. There um, you go. First one, does the State Department believe that Amy Winehouse, her music or her behavior poses a threat to the United States? And if not, why did you reject her visa application? Um, the State Department believes that uh, she is ineligible for a visa under the terms of the Immigration and Nationality Act. I don't believe anyone ever used the word threat associated with it, but there are many reasons for which um, individuals are not el eligible or otherwise need to have a waiver processed. Um, the main point in this, Matt, is uh, she's not eligible under the, the basic terms of the law unless a waiver is processed for it. She's asked for one. I understand. Uh, Department of Homeland Security is considering it, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens.
Amy's sober, looking pretty good, and she's absolutely fine. So happy. She's fine because she hasn't got to do it anymore. I met her in Istanbul. I said to her, the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you want. And we were talking about going away anyway, maybe relocated somewhere. She said, yeah, I feel, I feel really good. That sort of cloud's gone. And she didn't drink that month.